Hello and a very good afternoon. So welcome back. Um, it may seem like I'm walking along just a normal pathway um, here in Milton Keynes. However, I'm actually walking along what is known as the Railway Walk, which is the old Wolverton to Newport Pagnell branch line. Um, and it links in with a topic that a few of you have asked me to talk about. And that relates to the well-known, but probably not well-loved, Dr. Beechin. Um, so along this, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna position it how I've done previous topics by going through who he is, what he did, what happened afterwards. But the main thing that I wanna cover is a question as a whole. And at the end, I'll give sort of my opinion after I've done some more research and, and stuff. Cause I wanna give a bit more of an informed, you know, opinion about it. I don't just wanna waffle on, um, but no. It's quite a lovely walk this, so I'll get a couple of snapshots along the way. But the question I want to ask is, did Dr. Beechin get it wrong? So stay tuned for this video and I hope you enjoy it. And don't be afraid to comment your opinion as well. It'd be nice to see what other people think about him. So let's crack on with the episode. So, the line that I'm currently walking along, like I said, is the Wolverton Super Pagnell line, um, which had stations at New Bradwell and Great Linford. Now, in a residential area with Milton Keynes and how it's grown, for people who have lived here since Milton Keynes came along, you never would have thought this would be here. Unless you are someone that's lived here for a very, very long time and you will remember it very well. And there's a few people that I've seen that do. Um, not only that, so this, the reason why I'm actually walking along this line is because it actually links to the beaching report of 1963. Um, it was included. However, there was some resistance by the locals um, and it wasn't until 1967 when the line actually succumbed and it closed down to both passenger and freight and all the track work was lifted. So some of you may find that, you know, and there's a lot of people who hold Dr. Beechin in a very negative way. So let's look back at who is Dr. Beechin and what did he do to the railways? Dr. Richard Beeching was a physicist and an engineer. However, he was most well known for being the chairman of British Railways in the early 1960s. In the years leading up to this, the railways were in Britain were severely hemorrhaging money, recording losses such as 42 million in 1960. Beeching was given the task of trying to solve this problem, which worsened with the increasing popularity of motorways and cars. And it was him that had to find a way of returning the railways into running at a profit. On the 27th of March, 1963, he published the well-known documents known as the Beeching Report, which laid out his plan. And as a result of his report, over 4,000 miles of track were removed, a third of Britain's railway stations closed, and up to 70,000 railway jobs were lost over a three year period, which then caused an everlasting impact to the country. So there you go. So if you're someone that's watching that and you think, what a horrible man, what has he done to the railways? You know, he's totally collapsed them. Um, there's more to it. Um, but before I carry on, look, see we've got a platform edge here. Um, and then above me is obviously a railway bridge. So this, I believe, is the site of New Bradwell Railway Station. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm very sure well, I'm in New Bradwell, so I'm assuming that's that. Um, but no. So when you actually look into what happened afterwards, so like I, like I said in the voiceover just now, the railways were leaking a lot of money, um, and the railways in those times weren't in the best of states so something needed to be done however um i will touch on this but i believe what's happened more in the future years um in the longer term has sort of warranted it to be a bit more questionable um but nonetheless you know um uh, but moving on from that in terms of what happened has happened next on the railways i just want to touch into you know what happened to the lines that disappeared what has happened to you know communities and also it involves heritage railways as well because they've you know 
they've made comebacks and stuff like that, so I will touch on that. But it is very nice to see some form of, you know, railway history still here. Um, I've only seen short little clips of this line and it seems very, very good. But nonetheless, let's touch on with what happened next after the beaching cuts. After a few years and feeling the full force of the beaching report, the closure of so many lines and stations affected a lot of people up and down the country, with many of them falling into a sorry and abandoned state. Local branch lines that once played their part now force people to travel much further just to get a train. However, people didn't take this lightly, and with plenty of love and dedication, it saw the rise of preservation societies, which play their part in keeping the memories alive for people such as myself when they go to visit places like Peak Rail or the Wensleydale Railway, amongst many others. Not only that, but through a lot of local campaigning and economic needs, it has seen the return of some of these closed lines to mainline service. And once again, you will see a list of lines that have reopened, as well as future plans that are being chosen from the government's Restoring Your Railway Fund. And as a railway lover myself, it has been fantastic to see what can happen when people come together. These are just a few examples of these lines that have returned and the future proposals that are soon to come. There are many projects going on, such as locally for myself, it is seeing the return of the Oxford to Cambridge line. The railways are coming back and that's for sure. And there we go. So I'm hoping that I've brought you right up to speed with, you know, what's happened with Dr. Beechin. Um, so time for a bit of an opinion. So it may go on for a little bit. Um, I, in terms of did he get it wrong? I believe he did get it wrong. However, I want to stipulate that the way I look at it is he didn't take into account Yes, motorways and stuff were thriving and the car was becoming more and more popular. He didn't take into account population increase and also environmental needs. Now, yes, back then there was a lot of coal, diesel locomotives coming into play. So in terms of the environmental factor, you know, but there was still some electric lines about at, at that point. Well, coming into fruition at that point, you know, you had Southern on their third rail. I think the West Coast Main Line in the 60s had just completed their electrification such as with the east coast as well they were beginning theirs so he wasn't a fortune teller of course he couldn't predict the future however i believe a bit more forward planning could have maybe helped this situation because when you look at things now with certain lines that are making a comeback and certain old lines for example matlock to buxton they're getting their movement on having their line reinstated it's getting stronger and stronger and it's because of certain needs so they want to keep people in the local area for education increased jobs local economy um, and also environmental needs because it gets loads and loads of cars and lorries off the roads which i think now in the modern time where we're becoming a lot more climate conscious the need for those railways is probably come back and that is why you're seeing a lot of heavy investment um, but like I said back in the 60s when he done his report like I said hemorrhaging millions of pounds every year could he have foreseen that ifs buts and maybes you know he, he I think he died in the 80s or the late 70s um, so even then you know would he have would he have seen that or would someone along the way have seen that but by then you know tracks were lifted and you know certain bits and pieces i mean if you wanted to re reinstate this line for example i don't think it's ever, it, that, that this for example would never happen although in theoretical senses dig up the tarmac ballast it put some track down platforms are still here theoretically things can be done but nonetheless so all in all i think when you gather all of the information and you you know you put it all together i do believe that yes dr beeching got it wrong not horribly wrong but i think he got it wrong in a sense of like i said in the modern day term the need for certain lines are, are needed you know like like i said 
people in certain areas that lost their local line that are now having to drive to other stations it's getting cars off the road climate environment that kind of things are coming into play which makes it a lot more needful for them to come back and actually have something a bit more local to you know reduce carbon emissions and that's what it's all about and when you've got things like oh i don't know like little emus and even the viva rail project which i touched on you know using you know old start upcycling that kind of thing it all bodes well as a help but there's a lot of nooks and crannies to get through and you know dotting the i's crossing the t's that kind of thing but nonetheless i hope you've enjoyed this actually to be fair um very information based i try to give as much as i can and like i said with the research that i've done this is why i've come to that conclusion but there are people out there that feel like he got it right you know and that's an opinion thing so like i said at the start of the video leave a comment and let me know what you thought did he get it right did he get it wrong um give a little reason why if you want to but no that's a bit of a different video not really any trains to see however if we had a time machine there would be a few um but yes hope you've enjoyed it and i will see you in another video on an active line somewhere down the line see you then